Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, February the 4th. Uh, we will sing a few songs, ob observe the Lord's Supper. I have a message that I hope will be beneficial to all of you. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, I will give you the number and the name of the song. If you do not have that book, perhaps you can Google the song. You can use your own songbook. So if you choose to sing along with us, you can do so. The first song that we will sing is number 406, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. 406, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. <clears throat> I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus gave me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, dear Lord, close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. world of toils and snares. If I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Rather, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is o'er, time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely o'er to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. The next song is number 578. 578, We Will Glorify. Five seventy eight. We will glorify. 
We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe, all praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of kings, hallelujah to the Lamb, hallelujah to the Lord of lords, who is the great I Am. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 350. Three. When my love for Christ grows weak, we'll sing the first four verses. The first four verses. <clears throat> when my love to Christ grows weak, when for deeper faith I seek, then in thought I go to thee, Garden of Gethsemane. There I walk amid the shades, While the lingering twilight fades. See that suffering Friendless one, weeping, praying, there alone. When my love for man grows weak, when for stronger faith I seek, Hill of Calvary, I go to thy scenes of fear and woe. There behold his agony, suffered on the bitter tree. See his anguish, see his faith, love triumphant, still in death. We come to this part of our service where we observe the Supper of the Lord, the supper that was instituted on the night in which Jesus was betrayed when he met with his disciples and he explained to them uh, what would happen to him. And then as a memorial, and you know, uh, we know what memorials are, but this uh, was truly a memorial. The, more, the memorial was that on each first day of the week, uh, his disciples would remember what Jesus went through on the cross for the forgiveness of sins of man. And it comes down through history, through to 2024. It is the very same. Jesus is explaining to us that the emblems represented in the Lord's Supper are those that would remind us of the agony that he suffered when he was a one-time sacrifice for all, for the sins of man. So as we look at the bread, we view it as the body of our Lord. And as we look at the fruit of the vine, we look at it as the blood of our precious Savior. 
Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that at just the right time, you sent Jesus to us and that you sent him into a sinful world, knowing that he was the substitute for sin. He died on the cross that our sins might be forgiven. As we partake of this bread, help us to remember the agony that he went to as he was nailed on that cross. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. <clears throat> As we partake of this fruit of the vine, we remember the blood that flowed from Jesus' head and from his hands, his feet, from the side where he was uh, cut with a spear. We just uh, pray, dear Heavenly Father, as we uh, partake of this uh, symbol of his blood, that we will remember that it is our lifeblood. It is the blood that washes away our sins. Help us to take our sins to you, God, through the blood that Jesus shed. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Having completed the Lord's Supper, we are also instructed on the first day of the week to lay by in store that which we have been prospered and give back to the Lord. We have references to that in our New Testament. In the Old Testament, they tithed and they gave a tenth. In the New Testament, we are instructed to give as we have prospered. Let's remember our prosperity. And let's remember in Old Testament times that giving was a sacrifice. It should still be a sacrifice today. Uh, it shouldn't be the pennies that come from our pocket, but something that we have purposed, purposed in our heart to give back to the Lord so that uh, his work can be done through the church here on earth. Uh, let's pray for the giving. Our Heavenly Father, bless us as we give back to you. Bless us as we understand that we give you but your own, that all good things come from you. Help us to understand that we will take nothing with us when we pass from this physical life. Help us to understand that it is our work in the church, your kingdom here on earth, that is so important to all of us. Bless us as we give. Help us to give with an open heart and open mind and help us to give gener generously as we know you love a cheerful giver. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing is number 670. 670. The title of this song is O oh, for a Closer Walk with God. Oh, for a closer walk with God. <clears throat> oh, for a closer walk with God, a common heavenly frame, a light to shine upon the road that leads me to the Lamb. Where is the blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord? Where is the soul-refreshing view of Jesus and His Word? The dearest idol I am known, whate'er that idol be, 
Help me to tear it from thy throne and worship only so shall my walk be close with God, calm and serene my brain. So purer light shall mark the road that leads me to the Lamb. I know the Lord was glorified through the singing of these songs and praising him and i know that and i pray that we were each uplifted by the song that um, it is our duly uh, do justice for us to give praise to the one who created us if you were in attendance this morning and uh, maybe the two of the songs uh, that we sang kind of uh, got us in the framework of what uh, our lesson is all about this evening. Uh, the title of the lesson is A Closer Walk with God, and it is frameworked by the Christian and good works. The Christian and good works. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 20, uh, 4 and 25, uh, the Hebrew writer tells us in verse 24 that uh, we should encourage one another toward love and good deeds. And so we are indeed to do good deeds. Now, good deeds can't buy us into heaven, but nonetheless, as Christians, we are instructed to do good deeds deeds. We are instructed to do good works. And so with that, let's just remember a couple of things. First of all, we are to do good works. This is a biblical teaching. Don't misunderstand the purpose of good works. They are not done to buy or to earn our way into heaven. God, we understand, saves us by his grace, not by our works. This is explained for us in the second chapter of the book of Ephesians, verses 8 through 9, and in the book of Titus, verses uh, chapter 3, verses 4 to 7. However, with that in mind, we were created as human beings in the image of God, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. It is explained for us in the second chapter of Ephesians, verse 10, back to Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. Titus chapter 3, verse 1, verse 8, and verse 14. So, uh, we're going to see some do's and don'ts. The, the underlying principle here is that a Christian is to do good works. But we want to see the underlying reasons. And so you might ask the question, why are we to do good works? Well, Jesus explained it in Mark chapter 5, verse 16, where he said that good works bring glory to God. The apostle Peter said pretty much the same thing in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Now, there is more. There is more to this. Through our good works, we as Christians can, can affect unbelievers 
to be more receptive to the Bible. When we do good works for the right reasons, people will come to see Christ living in us. Peter explains that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, and in chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. What they do, according to James, in James chapter 2, verses 14 to 17, is they, I'm trying to, I'm trying to frame it in a proper way. They are to demonstrate the living nature of our faith. Our faith is a spiritual thing. The work that we do are physical things. Well, some of them are. We'll get into that a little bit further. And if we are to be like Jesus, we are to do good works because Jesus went around through his three plus year ministry here on earth doing good works for people. We are reminded of that in Luke chapter 6 verse 46 and in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. And so with that in mind, let's get a little bit more specific. What are some of the good works that we can do? Well, let's delineate. First, some good works are spiritual in nature. When we tell others about the wonderful grace that um, is found in Jesus Christ, we are doing a spiritual good work. Evangelizing is a spiritual good work. Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, tells us that we are to tell others about God's wonderful grace. And you know, uh, the scriptures say some of us are given to uh, teachers, some of us, uh, you know, all these different uh, traits that people have. Christians have different traits, and we may not be uh, formal teachers, but that old saying that I would rather see a sermon than hear one any time comes to the forefront here. When we do these spiritual good works, people see Jesus Christ living in us. That's what Paul meant when he wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 27 to 31. And this is what James was talking about in James chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. Now, even though all of us may not be teachers and all of us may not be preachers, all of us can share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and what is available in Jesus Christ to others. With that, this, that part was geared to unbelievers how about within our church structure? We are to encourage other Christians. I led that off in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Let us encourage one another in love and good works. And in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, the Hebrew writer tells us that very same thing. We can all be a Philemon, Philemon verse 7. We can all be a Stephanus, 1 Corinthians 16, verses 15 and 16. What did these people do? They were in an encouragement to their fellow Christians, Philemon and Onesimus, Stephanus, 
to the church. And so with that, we can do that today. We have greater means than they had in the first century. We can call someone. We can write someone. And if writing seems to be something that's almost obsolete, we can text someone. We can email someone. Through the social media, we can encourage one another. We can <clears throat> restore weak brethren. That's what uh, Paul meant when he wrote Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 2, that we are to help the weak. We can be a Barnabas. Remember, Barnabas was the encourager. When Barnabas and Paul had a difference of opinion about John Mark, um, who wanted to go back home, uh, Barnabas uh, trusted that John Mark was better than leaving uh, that missionary journey. And, and by the way, it turned out to be that way. He turned out to be great use to the Apostle Paul. And so the importance of good works is seen. You know, the book of James uh, tells us a lot about faith and works. James chapter 5, verses 19 to 20. You know, James lets us know, show me your faith. And he says, I'll show you my faith by the works that I do. Our faith is shown by how we live our Christian lives. And the way we live our Christian lives is substantiated in the good things that we do. Now, some works are physical in nature. Let's not get away from that. God didn't, uh, Jesus, when he walked here on earth, did not limit his work to spiritual things. He helped people in non-spiritual ways. When Jesus healed the sick, that wasn't spiritual, that was physical. When he fed the 5,000, that was a physical blessing that he gave to these people. And over and over, Jesus did physical things to show exactly who he was. And by the way, he didn't expect his disciples there in the first century to uh, limit their good works. Um, we, we see that uh, just interwoven in the tapestry of first century Christianity, that people were to do good things for one another. You know, you and I can do that. You and I can help someone. If we have an elderly neighbor, we can shovel their driveway in time of, of snow. We, we can do just little things. Little things without asking. Do those little things, those little physical things. Because those physical things show others that we care. And especially when it comes from Christians, it shows that even more. And you know what? Paul says, while we have opportunity in Romans chapter 12, verses 3 to 8, while we have opportunity, let's not hold back in doing good things. A, a few moments ago, as part of our service, we talked about giving. Giving back to the Lord is a service. It is a physical service. We take money from our own personal uh, cachet and we give it back to the Lord. When we show mercy to people, we are exhibiting in a physical way what it means to be a Christian. Um, 
when we use our time wisely, we show the Lord that his, that the work that he has set out for us is vitally important. You know, we look at Dorcas in Acts chapter 9, verses 36 to 39, and the good things that she did. We look at the story of Mary and Martha when Jesus visited. Both did good things. Martha provided for the physical needs of those people that were there. And Mary wanted to listen to those spiritual things that Jesus had to say. We can all be people that uh, just, you know, just literally explode with doing good works for others. James chapter 1, verse 27, I believe explains to us that no matter how we serve the Lord, good works are a mark of pure religion. They reflect what God means to us. And that it is the capstone of spiritual blessedness and happiness when we do good deeds for others. James chapter 1 verse 25 and Acts chapter 20 verse 35. And with that, as the lesson becomes yours this evening, let's remember the words of the Apostle Paul when he wrote to Titus in Titus chapter 3, verse 8. He said, Those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. What a great way to end this lesson about having a closer walk with God through the good things that we do for God and the good things that we do for others. Perhaps there's some questions that we might ask here. For example, what kind of spiritual works are you doing? How are you preparing yourself to do them? What kind of physical good works are you doing? And finally, who gets the glory when good works are done? All viable questions for us to get ourselves started in the right direction in doing good works as a reflection of our belief in God. You know, uh, all of this was geared to believers. Believers are to do these good works. And so if you're not a believer this evening, if you haven't obeyed God's plan of salvation, having heard the word and believing it, if you have not repented of your sins, confess Jesus as the Son of God and been baptized for the remission of your sins, you haven't started your walk and your, your good deeds will not be reflected as Christian good deeds, as good deeds being done because you love the Lord. If you need to come to the Lord tonight, we invite you to come. If, if it's an instant thing, get in touch with one of us. We will be at your beck and call. Let's close with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we just realize that in this world, there is so much that can be done. As Christians, we should be the the driving force, we should understand that as a reflection of our faith in the Lord, that we are to go about doing good just as Jesus did in his time on earth, just as the apostle Paul did, just as all of the apostles did. Uh, we spread the word through uh, our belief. We show God's grace to others, to unbelievers. And we encourage one another toward love and good deeds. Help us to do that as your children. Bless us in our work here on earth, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to use our talents that you have given us 
to the best of our abilities so that the life of Christ may be reflected in us. Be with us this evening. Bless us. Help us to look forward to the next time that we get to meet again. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love.